Hey guys, it's your boy Aaron, and this video will be very serious. This video, I'm going to try to give my testimony in this video. Like, it's not going to be, like, extremely serious. I'll make sure that, um, that there are lighthearted points and that, like, I use humor and stuff. But yeah, this is gonna be, like, my testimony in the most, like, tasteful way possible. I'm going to try not to use any adult language, and I'm going to try not to, uh, just s be too inappropriate or dark because it's not really necessary. But yeah, let's, let's try to dive into this. See... I am 24 years old. I am a Methodist Christian man. I have Asperger's Syndrome. I mean, I grew up in a Christian home, but we weren't like super spiritual or religious or anything. I would say that when I was 13 years old in the summer camp going into 8th grade, like, that's when I went to my first church camp, and I think one night during that church camp is when I truly accepted Jesus into my heart and wanted to start taking baby steps to become serious as a Christian. For that summer night when I was 13, you know, I was a good kid. I was just, I was kind of just an awkward little kid with autism like everyone loved me everyone thought I was like a cool kid and yeah like I occasionally went to church with my family and like with my cousins and stuff before then I went to this amazing church called Saddleback Church it's amazing yeah, Saddleback Church is where I went to pretty much the entire time until I moved up to Portland when I was 19. Yeah, up until then, I pretty much always went to Saddleback Church. Like, they had so many, like, cool events there, like Halloween events, New Year's Eve events. Um, they had... Uh, middle school and high school ministry where we met there on Saturday nights and I would look forward to it so much that going to the refinery at Settleback on Saturday nights like that usually made my weekend it was that great yeah I kind of shifted between a few different Bible studies there and I really it really made me grow in my walk with Christ to just have really open, candid conversations with guys my age. And when I was in high school, I was struggling with a lot of stuff. I was watching things I really shouldn't have been watching. Like I was reading things I shouldn't have been reading. What's more, I was way too caught up in like the nightclub scene and I was putting relationships with girls on way too high of a pedestal. Like I was idolizing being in a relationship and you really don't want to be doing that. Like I was never truly in a relationship when I was in high school and I'm pretty glad because it was not the right time for me. It really was, wasn't the right time. I needed to fo just focus on other things and grow in spiritual maturity and learn more about myself. And that was what I did. Like, I had an amazing therapist when I was like between the ages of 16 up to when I moved to Portland when I was 19. Like, he taught me a lot of stuff. Like, he always told me, like, how it was, but always encouraged me all the same. Like, he was an 
excellent therapist to me and he was the reason why I'm studying psychology right now and want to become a therapist in the future to like other teenagers and other young adults. Yeah, the therapist I had in my mid to late teens, he taught me a lot of things that I still remember now and I still apply now. And like without God placing him in my life for the time he was, I wouldn't have had such a passion for studying psychology and studying mental health. And I would say that right now, as a 24 year old in 2020, I'm at an amazing state right now. I can really fend for myself. I have pretty solid mental health. But like, it, none of it came very naturally. Like, I used to hate myself. I used to hate everything about myself. I used to always want to do what everyone else is doing to be cool. And I used to always like want to live vicariously through other people. And it, it did not happen overnight for me to overcome any of those obstacles. I sure as hell had to work for it. And do you want to know how I worked for it? Well, I discovered this amazing organization called Fight the New Drug, who really shifted the way I see like adult content and make me see it for what it is, just toxic slime that shouldn't be in anyone's life, let alone my life. Like, I still... I still go on the Fight the New Drug website to this day because it's like that toxic slime is just everywhere. And it's, I also, I also decided to take a stand for becoming mindful of, about the way I consume media with my Media Mindfulness Binder. Okay, I started this Media Mindfulness Binder years ago. Like, around the time I turned 20, so no less than four years ago did I start making this. Like, I use a combination between websites like Plugged In, Common Sense Media, to be mindful about just the way that I consume media. Like, it's... It's, it's amazing, like... Every time before watching a movie or before playing a video game, I always consult this binder. This binder is about 30 pages long. Like this was a huge immersive project for me. And you know what? I really don't regret making this at all. It's one of my proudest achievements ever. Yeah, it was around this time, like, when I started making the Media Mindfulness Binder, is that's when I realized that I really need to read the Bible more often. I've, at this point, I read the Bible pretty much every single day through using the Uversion app on my iPhone, and I just do, like, one or two or three different like programs on U version at the same time. Like that makes it pretty fun. Absolutely adore U version because like you don't even have to um, read it yourself. I have an audiobook version where it reads the Bible to you and you just follow along. And that really helps get you through it. It was also around the time when I was 20 where I started to find my favorite Christian YouTubers. I discovered channels here on YouTube like Katie Emerson, Far Away Distance, Gamer Faith, Montel Fish. I can't express enough how much I admire and look up to those YouTubers. Everyone that's a Christian and is on YouTube should be subscribed to them. They have like amazing things to say. They're like very influential and encouraging men and women. 
Like I said, this was an extremely slow and long process for me to get to where I am now. I used to just hate myself to the core. I was never proud of myself about anything. I was always cursing at myself. I was always having blasphemous thought patterns. I was always wondering if it was a mistake that God even allowed me to be born in the first place. It, I was at a really dangerous state and without my loving friends, family, the people who I looked up to on YouTube, like all of my mentors, if it wasn't for them, I would have never have crawled out of that abysmal hole. I probably still would have been lost in it if I didn't, if God didn't transform me. And if it, this was all God's doing, like b barely any of this was from my own strength. It was just for me relying on God and me always coming back to him and getting on my knees. And I always got as raw and transparent with God as I possibly could. Like, I never sugarcoated anything. And people like that about me. Like, how I'm so transparent and I don't really like the sugarcoat things. Yeah, guys, speak your mind when you're talking to the people that care about you. It really helps. There's a lot of power and speaking your mind to, to the people you're opening up to. And always make sure that you have good hobbies. Like, my two favorite hobbies are probably reading and writing because like when I read and when I write, especially in interactive journals where you read and then write, that really helps me like bring my true emotions out of me and onto paper and it's it's just beautiful man and of course i have other hobbies like live music anime handheld video gaming watching a good tv show watching good films and like i said my media mindfulness binder helps me to enjoy these good pleasures for the glory of God. Like, I think video games, music, TV shows, movies, they're all gifts from God. And with my binder, like, it just makes me sure that I'm staying on the right path. So, yeah, guys, all in all, the man I am today, it was from not my own doing, but from God's doing. Like, God gave me all of the strength and he put me through all of this trials and tribulations and character development, I would not have it any other way. I really wouldn't have it any other way. And just moral of the story, uh, find your passion, find your community, find your people, and find Jesus. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for listening to my testimony. This was very liberating.